Hi, my name is Hamlet Darcy. I work for Canoe Engineering. This is a podcast about Makito argument matching. This is the third in a series. The first one was about stubbing behavior with Makito. The second one was about verifying behavior and side effects with Makito. And this one's about argument matching. Argument matching is an API that allows you to have flexibility with your stubs and mocks. We're going to see how it works with examples. The point of argument matching is to make your unit tests more flexible and less brittle. So here, as with our past examples, we have a user service object. It's just a simple Java object with a one method. It takes a parameter and is a void, and it just does pure delegation to its dependency. This is just a small example to make it easy to demonstrate the Makito API. What we're going to do is write a test for this method. First thing is to create a unit test, user service test, and then a test. Uh, test save method is what we want. And since we want to bring the user service under test, we'll do a new user service. And user manager is the dependency that we need to mock out. So if you remember, mockito.mock is the object that gives you a mock object based on a class or interface. And when we have this user service, what we can do is call save user service dot save and I'll pass in my name Hamlet. Okay. So at this point user service is going to delegate on to this user manager mock. And we can assert that this side effect happens correctly with the verify method. Makito.verify user manager dot save Hamlet. And this test will run and pass. This verify statement ensures that the uh, save method was called with the parameter correctly. The problem is that this is very brittle. In this example, we're fine to verify a string, but a lot of times you don't really care what the parameter type is. Um, for instance, maybe Makito dot any string is the, is the argument matcher that you want to pass. This means that this unit test will pass any time that save with any sort of parameter whatsoever uh, is passed. Java is statically typed, so this is just saying I don't care what the parameter is. In case your object's not a string, there's a whole bunch of API, any boolean, any byte. There's also a generic version, which inserts the generic correctly. That's quite easy to use. The other, um, the other option here is to based on class. Is is a with a class parameter string dot class. Okay, and there's a whole bunch of matchers. And you may have seen in the autocomplete. There's is null, is not null. Those are your very useful uh, for strings. In specifically, we have a Makito starts with method. We also have an ends with method for matching. If you want to know more about the argument, you could write a custom argument matcher. I find it easier to use an argument capture object. And that was, I talked about that in the last screencast. Okay. The other one that you really need to know about is the equal. This just dispatches onto the equals implementation on your object. If you have more than one parameter in the parameter list, every single parameter needs to be a matcher or primitive type. You can't mix and match. So if this API actually took an integer and a string, then this would fail. Makito would fail on this uh, because you're trying to send in an integer, which is a primitive, uh, or any non-matcher type, and a matcher, which is a wrapper around that type. So in this case, if this were your API, you'd want to do Makito EQ uh, to make it equal. And that's really all there is to say about argument matchers. There's a lot of them. They're standard. The Hamcrest ones ship with JUnit. It's a pretty standard Java technology at this point. So that's it for argument matchers. I hope you enjoyed the series, and happy mocking. Bye.